Dudley Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, those links are in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to bring these wood plaque wall decor pieces to life. Dollar Tree is carrying these right now. This is an adorable Santa. I've seen a gingerbread, I've seen a snowman, and let me tell you, I will be bringing you DIYs using those, but today I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to paint these and bring these to life. I've had so many of you tell me in the hauls when I actually hauled these that you love them, but you really just don't know what to do with them. You didn't feel like you had the artistic ability to actually do what needed to be done to bring these to life. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I honestly am not artistically, I would say, inclined when it comes to drawing something or painting. I do feel like I have a bit of a creative mind, but I tell you, I leave the art and the drawing to my mom and Kayla. They are both so very talented and can draw just about anything, can paint anything, and it comes out amazing. I, on the other hand, have to find alternatives. I have to find ways around it because my hands just don't work the way theirs do when it comes to drawing. But when it comes to these, I will tell you, my mom knew that I struggled with art. And so she often would sit me down and do some of these projects with me and she taught me ways around it to actually, I guess, kind of fake it, to make it look like you're artistically inclined even though you may feel like you're not. And so today I'm gonna show you how you can bring these to life and turn them into something so stinking cute that people are gonna think you bought them somewhere and they're gonna ask you where you found it because it's so stinking cute. So let's not waste any more time and let me show you just how easy it is to paint these. You're gonna love this and you can do it, so don't be intimidated. For today's DIY, I'll be using this seasonal fat quarter that I got from Walmart for $1.47. I'll also be using some Mod Podge. I'm gonna start off by removing the twine because I personally am not gonna need it you may want to set it aside because you may want to use it at the end. I'm going to take and apply some of the Mod Podge to just the top of Santa's hat. I don't want to put it where the white part of the hat would be or where the pom-pom would be. I'm just going to place some Mod Podge right here where the red part of the hat would be. And I'm going to be a bit generous, but you want to be careful because you don't want to get the Mod Podge anywhere but on this area of the hat. I cut a piece of fabric just big enough to cover the area where I placed the Mod Podge, the red part of Santa's hat. So I'm gonna lay this down on the Mod Podge and I'm gonna really just rub it down. I want it to stick to that area. You really wanna crease the creases along the edge of his hat where the white furry part would be. Once I've got this laid down nice and good, I am gonna apply a second coat of Mod Podge over the top of this. And again, when applying the Mod Podge, you really just wanna make sure and get the Mod Podge only on the areas of the fabric that you want the fabric to actually stick to this wood plaque. Once I get this second coat applied, I am gonna pop this in my oven. I set the temperature of my oven to about 150 degrees. I'm gonna set this in there and it's gonna be dry in like five minutes versus waiting an hour or two for it to dry. I do this often with my DIYs. I have a lot of you saying, is there a residual smell? Does your food come out smelling or tasting like paint or Mod Podge? Absolutely not, it doesn't. I've never had a problem. It's just something that I do to speed up the DIY drying process, if you will, rather than setting it outside or just setting it on a counter for a couple of hours. I like to keep my projects moving and so that's just one of the tricks of my trade that I use to keep my DIY moving and to get these projects dry in just a bit quicker. The Mod Podge is good and dry and when you do this, it really does stiffen up the fabric. It makes it harder and so it makes it really easy to cut through using a straight edge blade, even scissors. It helps so the fabric doesn't fray 
And so I'm gonna flip over this plaque and I'm gonna use my razor and just use the edge of the plaque as a guide to help keep my edges straight, give me nice clean edges, and I'm gonna cut off the excess fabric. And on the front side where the pom-pom is, I'm just gonna cut straight across, giving me a nice straight edge here. And right around the rim of his hat where the white furry part would be, because it is elevated a bit, you can use that edge as a guide and get a nice clean cut here as well. Now would you look at how stinking cute that turned out already, and it took us maybe 10 minutes to do. Now for Santa's face, I'll be using Apple Barrel's Sunkissed Peach. This is a good flesh skin tone color, 50 cents a bottle at Walmart. I'm gonna give his face a nice base coat and his nose. Now Santa needs a mouth and this plaque did not come with one. So that means that I'm gonna have to draw one on using a pencil and I'm using a pencil because one, it's lead and I can easily erase it if I need to and two, I think that the paint will cover it up. And so you can see that it doesn't go smoothly for me. Like I told you, I am not an artist when it comes to drawing and so I'm just gonna keep at it until I get the shape that I'm happy with. Because I don't seem to have any pink paint on hand, I'm gonna have to make my own, which is fine, and I'm gonna do that using Apple Barrel's white and red apple acrylic paint. Both of these are a matte finish. When you're mixing your colors, if you're going for that lighter shade, you're gonna wanna always start off with the lightest color, not the darker one, because you're gonna end up using more paint than you need to. And so by starting off with the white and just adding a drop of red, I'm gonna achieve the pink that I want pretty quickly. I'm happy with the color. This is perfect for Santa's mouth and I think it's gonna definitely cover up all of those pencil lines that I've made. And because I've already got the pink out, I figured I'd add a bit of the pink and red to Santa's nose because his nose is always cold from being in the sled. When it comes to eyes, I hate this part, I'm not gonna lie to you. Eyes, I feel like they're the hardest part to do of any face. And so my mom used to always tell me, less is more, you can do these very simply and the outcome is gonna be adorable. And so she taught me to do these half triangles that kind of bubble out. And they give them a thickness and it makes it look like Santa's eyes are closed. It's easy to do, it doesn't take, any artistic talent to do this. You can see that I was struggling with it. I tried to make them the same. My mom used to always tell me that our eyes aren't twins. One always looks a little bit different than the other. And so I don't worry too much about perfection and making sure that they're identical, but I try to make sure that they're pretty much the same shape, which I'm doing here. So this is what I'm left with. This is as good as it's gonna get with me. I'm gonna fill the eyes in using a 3D puffy paint. I love working with this stuff, only I don't like using it out of the bottle because a lot of times when you squeeze the bottle, you'll kind of get an air bubble and it'll pop and it'll make your paint splatter. And so I like to apply the puffy paint with a paintbrush. And I feel like by doing this, you can get those nice cleaner edges and you can even shape your eyes a bit more as you're doing it. If you wanna use an acrylic paint instead of a puffy paint, you totally can. It really is your preference. I just really love the way puffy paint dries. It dries puffy, and so that's what I was looking for when it came to his eyes. Now, honestly, that was easy peasy, and the outcome is so stinking cute. I've always been one who felt like when painting these plaques, if you just used an acrylic paint and did kind of a flat paint, even though there is shading and ways to add dimension to it, I can't do that. And so like I say, I look for alternative methods. I've always been a texture person. I've always been one when I'm creating, I like to bring different textures into my DIYs. And I feel like it brings an element of warmth to something. I think it adds character to it. And I think it's a way that you can actually just make something so stinking cute without even trying with very little effort. And so that's why I like to bring textures into this because I feel like it makes it just a bit different than anything else that you see. For the white parts of Santa, I'll be using a puffy paint as well. 
You can find this four and a quarter ounce bottle at Walmart for $3.27. They've got smaller bottles if you're looking to stay on a budget a bit more that are about a half ounce to a three quarter ounce bottle that you can get for 50 cents, 60 cents, I believe. You can get a fabric puffy paint at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, but that is not the better buy. So if you're looking to save money and do this DIY for as little as possible, you'll want to head over to Walmart and pick up your apple barrel paint and your puffy paint there. Once I get the puffy paint applied to the rim of his hat and the pom-pom, I'm going to let this set for just about five minutes. After it's set for five minutes, it's not going to be completely dry, but I'm going to take the tip of my puffy paint bottle and I'm going to dab it into the puffy paint that I just applied. And this is going to give it dimples. This is going to add just some little dots to it and it's going to give it just a bit more character instead of it just being a smooth, flat, puffy paint. For Santa's beard and mustache, I'm going to do the same thing. If you want to pop this in the oven, you can. I will tell you though that by popping it in the oven, you're going to lose the dimples and the dots that are on the hat that you made. You're going to end up with a flatter finish because it's going to kind of heat up the puffy paint and melt it down a bit. So for this part of the DIY, you're better off just letting it air dry so it dries the way it is. I just let this set for about five minutes and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some dimples to his beard and his mustache. Oh my word, I can't help it, he's so stinking cute, I love it! I realized when Santa was dry and I thought I was done that he doesn't have rosy cheeks and that's something that he needs. I still had my paint played out from yesterday and there was a bit of paint that wasn't completely dried yet. And so by adding just a bit of water to my brush and running it through that paint, I was able to get enough paint out to give Santa the rosy cheeks that he needs to finish him off. Okay, I can't help it, I have to say it again. This Santa is so stinking cute and I can hardly wait to bring you my snowman and the gingerbread man. This is such an easy way to paint these wood plaques just by adding fabric and texture this is the outcome it really doesn't take any of that artistic talent i guess you could say to do these you're probably asking what do i do with this if you wanted to replace the twine you could and you can hang this from a doorknob a door you could even add some of those velcro strips by command to the back of this and you could take down a couple pictures and replace those pictures during the holiday season with these adorable wood plaques as accent pieces for the season. Just a quick story that I wanted to share with you about my mom and Kayla's artistic talent. This is a clown that my mom freehand drew years and years and years ago on a paper bag, I think it was. Kayla and I have never been able to find or figure out what kind of brown paper this is. I loved this picture. This was something that my sister had and when my sister passed away, I took it. And all I wanted for Mother's Day was for Kayla to recreate this because Kayla asked me if she could have my mom's original picture and I said yes. And so this is my mom's and this is Kayla's and the outcome I am just floored by. The talent that they both have is just amazing and it was just a little something that I wanted to share with you all. For those of you that felt like you were intimidated to paint these, I hope today I was able to show you just how easy it is to do this and how you can really bring these to life and add so much character to them and just make them something that is so stinking cute that people are going to tell you it's cute and they're going to want to know where you got it and when you tell them you did it, they are going to think you are the most creative artistic person they've ever met. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY and this tutorial. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave in the comments down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget and bye for now, everybody.